Good afternoon from our studio. It's 12 and here is the world news from Tsungba 100.9 FM. Frost headlines. Minister charged media on national security and unity. National Youth Service Corps aims the army for support to corps members. On Metro News, three killed as Scottish hold the Lagos community hostage for one month. <music> On Entertainment News, Yoruba actress Joke Jigon slams celebrities doing Simi's challenge. <music> On Sports News, in tennis, Andim Ray bows out of Indian Wells in style against Alexander Verev. On international news, Putin says Russia to speed up vaccination for COVID-19. Stay tuned for the details. I am Sarah Olushusi. <music> Welcome back now the news in full. The Nigerian Minister of Information and Culture, Alhanji Lai Muhammad, has recalled on the media to be circumspect as they exercise their freedom on the job taken into Cognizance the national unity and security. The minister who was represented by Oladipo Ola Okunu, a director in the Ministry of Information and Culture, disclosed this in Abuja at a one symposium with the theme information as a public good. He said that the government sees the media as partners in progress in their collective quest to fulfill that wish the founding fathers toyed and bled for. The minister reminded the audience that fake news, misinformation, and hate speech can lead to civil unrest and also impact negatively on our national cohesion. Hence, they must eschew the practice. <music> the Director General of the National Youth Service Corps, Brigadier General Shuaibu Ibrahim, has commended the Nigeria Army for its support for the welfare and security of corps members. The Director General said these when he paid a courtesy visit to the General Officer Commanding 82 Division, Nigeria Army Major General T.A. Lagbaja at the Division's headquarters in Enugu, Southeast Nigeria. Ibrahim noted with delight that the General Officer Commanding personally visited the, the orientation camp in Enugu to monitor activities and consolidate on the security arrangements in the facility. It therefore expressed commitment to further strengthen the cordial relationship between the scheme and the Nigeria Army. <music> Chairman and Chief Executive of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Brigadier General Baba Mawa, has assured the international community of Nigeria's readiness to go after assets of drug barons. Mawa gave the assurance in his presentation at the ongoing third committee session of the 76th United Nations General Assembly in New York, United States. In a statement by the agency director, media and advocacy, Femi Baba Femi, the chief executive was quoted as saying that Nigeria will remain undaunted in adopting dynamic strategies to counter new approaches adopted by organized criminals to make drug trafficking unattractive while ensuring fortify for future of the criminally derived assets, a texted and powerful deterrent to the prohibition of drug crimes and criminalities. <laughs> On Metro News, three persons have been reportedly killed in the ongoing supremacy clashes involving members of the Aye and Aye courts in Owode and Ibeshi communities in the Igbogbo Baiku, local council development area of Lagos State. Among the victims was a betting agent identified only as Shegun, who was hit by a stray bullet. It was learned that the other victims were suspected courtes, one of whom was shot dead around the F1 bar in the Ebute area of Ikorodu West, West Local Council Development Area of Lagos State. 
It was gathered that the supremacy battle had been ongoing for over a month in the communities. Some residents were said to have abandoned their houses to seek refuge in safe environments, while many lived in constant fear of the unknown. A source said the cultists actually engaged one another with guns, cutlasses, and mash machetes, adding that business activities in Owode and Ibeche areas had been grounded due to the court attacks. A politician wrote to me, Balogun said the courts we are fighting over tax collection from truck drivers conveying sand into the communities and land matters adding that the police in the area needed support to resolve the problem the state's police public relation officer csp adekule adishibutu said it would get back to the newsmen after being briefed On entertainment news, singer Simi started a challenge called Nobody Like Woman. The challenge seems women telling stories of what society has told them at one point or the other. A lot of Nigerian celebrities have taken part in the challenge as they share their own stories. Yoruba actress Jokeji Go has, however, slammed some of her colleagues over their posts. According to her, many of them posted what did not happen to them. Yoruba actress Joker Jigo reacts to her colleagues doing Simi's challenge. The actress did not seem pleased to see posts from to see posts from some of her colleagues as she noted that they were lying about what they shared. According to her, what some of the women partaking in challenge do is backstab gossip which other people which other people bad and spread false news. Joker added that these women do not understand what the challenge is about, but they just want to follow the trend. Now let's join Kemi Ojedira on Sports News. On Tungba 100 for FM. My name is Kemi Oje Dero. In tennis, Fure pushed Alexander Verev every step of the way but was un unanimously unable to overcome the German third seed in Indian Wells, falling 6-4, 7-6. Alexander Verev notched his first career win against the former world number one that moved him into the fourth round. And the Murray said he didn't play well and he did, not, did a lot of mistakes and his consistency isn't there. With the win, Alexander Verev will meet Frenchman Gail Morphins in the quarterfinal. After the match, Alexander Verev paid tribute to Andy Murray's performances in his on court interview, saying Andy Murray is the only one of the big four that he hasn't beaten yet, and he is happy that he did that today. And the Murray made it known that he plans to skip next month Davis Cup finals because he is not sure he deserves to play in that team. He also said he wants to take a rest and take a break and give his body a chance to breathe. And in football, Cristiano Ronaldo became the first men player to score 10 international hat-tricks when Portugal trust Luxembourg on Tuesday night. Cristiano Ronaldo scored two penalties before netting a late header to help his country, Portugal, record a 5 new victory in their latest 2022 World Cup qualifier with Bruno Fernandes and Jao Paulina also getting in on the score sheet. Cristiano Ronaldo now has 150 goals to his name for Portugal, having also scored in their 3 new win against Qatar last weekend. Cristiano Ronaldo has now scored 58 career hat-tricks, including 10 for Portugal which is more than any other player has managed 
for his country. And that's all on Sport News on Tungba 100 for FM. My name is Kemi Ojedino. Let's get back to Olushusi Sera for the rest of the news. Thanks for listening and good afternoon. <laughs>